I had played football and basketball at UCLA. I was on football scholarship, but I was probably most uh, remembered as the starting center on the UCLA freshman basketball team and performed pretty well on the freshman team and was a decent athlete. Uh, but I couldn't jump that well. Uh, and I had a football player's body. Uh, and suddenly this sport uh, emerged that took my skills as a basketball player, which was movement and my ability to catch things and throw, and uh, put it on a basketball court-like uh, playing surface. And uh, you throw a ball into a goal, and um, suddenly a whole new opportunity at the age of 26 uh, opened up to me. In uh, October of 77, just um, literally nine months after um, I started playing for the first time, uh, I was playing against Canada uh, for the right to go to the World Championships uh, with USA across my chest. And uh, from that moment, um, I was smitten. Um, I remember uh, touring with the Romanian national team but, uh, back in uh, September of 77 uh, on a bus. We couldn't speak Romanian, they couldn't speak English, uh, but we got along. We stopped in Philly and uh, went to Liberty Hall and uh, I remember taking a picture with uh, Stefan Bertalan. Uh, who was probably the Babe Ruth of the sport at the time. And uh, um, I was uh, absolutely thrilled to be part of this game that uh, I could play well and probably more than anything uh, presented a certain camaraderie that... Uh, I embraced wholeheartedly. As we got off the bus, there was sort of a murmur that we could hear. I remember getting off the bus with uh, Tommy Schnee, Tom Schneeberger, and uh, we got off. And as we got off, we looked up, and there were the uh, northern lights, Aurora Borealis. And not just in the distance, it was right over us just dancing incredibly and uh, we must have just sat there or stood there with with our jaws <laughs> wide open just totally amazed um, until uh, it was probably Tom Digby our manager said come on boys and we got into the gym and I remember that was probably my Greatest athletic night, I went eight for eight, and I was playing circle runner, as I always did, and that's not a position that's a real high-scoring position. So having a eight for eight night, uh, scoring eight goals for a circle runner was um, pretty high and not missing a shot, and it was a variety of shots. I did a lob shot, a wing shot, uh, suddenly the game made sense to me in a way that it hadn't, and uh, I blame it on Aurora. Some people blame it on Rio. I blame it on Aurora. Over the years, as my passion for the sport as a player inevitably uh, grew to helping to organize the sport, and promote it, and in my case, publicizing it because of the professional skills that I have. Um, uh, I have come to work with the NGBs uh, of Team Handball, um, and I say NGBs, National Governing Bodies, um, because there's been two of them. USATHF, United States Team Handball Federation, which existed essentially from 1959, certainly from my start uh, with the sport until um, <clears throat> I believe it was 
sometime in the early 2000s um, when for various reasons uh, that title was taken away and USA Team Handball was created which is more part of an umbrella uh, set of organizations um, that report a little more directly to the USOC, more minor sports um, who have more accountability to the USOC and as such are more <clears throat> have to listen to the USOC uh, a little more intently. So those of us who are involved with AHA have over the years been frustrated with um, the NGB efforts to create programs and sustain them. And uh, we felt that part of our mission was to step outside the box, so to speak, and try to create something uh, that will have fewer political ties, that will be more professionally based, and that will more, I would say, fervently embrace the legacy and the culture of American handball as we have come to know it. As former players, as former administrators of a sport that has a deep culture in this country, we feel that it's our responsibility to uphold that culture and um, represent it in all its generational manifestations. Not just the old guys like me, but the new generation as represented by two of our members, J.D. Orr and Max Littman. Um, so um, we're trying to do in many cases what everybody else wants to do with handball, which is expand the sport, uh, raise consciousness in America, but we're also trying to do that within um, the culture that we feel has existed for over 60 years and that should be honored and respected. Uh, one of the main things that we've been pursuing over the last few years is our film uh, Army Champs, which is the story of our very first Olympic men's handball team in 1972, a team almost exclusively made up of soldiers who basically had a choice of going to Vietnam or learning this game they've never heard of before. Uh, so we're about halfway through production on that. Uh, we hope to finish that in 2021 and then offer that to streaming services wherever we can just to get the word out uh, about this sport. And we feel it's a great crossover audience opportunity to expand uh, the notion of handball to uh, people who are not necessarily sports fans but like a good story. I think the intriguing thing about uh, me and JD is this relationship between a 27 year old guy who is passionate about the sport of handball and a 70-year-old man who has been passionate about handball all his life, uh, and we're very much uh, like each other. Uh, Mike Leonard and I were in charge of the L.A. portion of it, and it just so happened that um, they were filming portions of a syndicated series uh, called The Road to Moscow, um, which was all about Olympians um, trying to make their way to uh, getting to Moscow the following year. And uh, so I ended up working with a producer named Vin DeBona, who later went on to fame uh, creating Entertainment Tonight. Um, but while we were in L.A., uh, they filmed us uh, for a couple of days um, playing, practicing, 
Um, we were at a uh, post-game dinner doing interviews. Um, anyway, when that finally came out uh, and it played nationally, um, on that um, Road to Moscow segment um, that played nationally, uh, I was described as the ambassador for Team Handball in America. I was 28 when Road to Moscow um, appeared nationally, describing me as the ambassador for Team Handball in America. And here, JD is 27 and being now the ambassador for the sport uh, in America. And uh, it's great that we've come together to work on American Handball Associates together. Um, I bring my crowd, sort of the 72 to 88 um, gang of primarily American athletes who played internationally and on club teams that uh, I either played with or against. And now JD brings... We know we're here to think outside the box. We couldn't be more outside the box. Uh, this whole thing has been created more or less as a response to the previous administration. It started with our first event, uh, a tribute dinner for Mike Kavanaugh. Um, now it's blossomed, I think, into greater aspirations. We hope to continue the um, tribute dinners in 2021 with um, a dinner honoring Laszlo Urak in June for his 90th birthday. And we think we've got a number of projects that uh, need doing and need doing to help the sport in general, but also USA Team Handball, and we look forward to creating a very collaborative relationship with them.